We've got approximately 3,500 does, uh, mainly rangeland, saw some variety areas, traditionally wool growers. Um, I'm here with my wife, Jess, and my three girls, and mum and dad. Um, we've got about 9,000 acres here. Coming out of the drought of 2019, like everybody, we sort of had to reassess a lot of things and how we were doing things and didn't want to keep doing things the same way. Um, had to go back to the bank and refinance and make some tough decisions and basically had to find an animal that was suited to our environment but had a bit of turnover, cash flow and that sort of thing. And the goats was a idea that came together slowly but... Yeah, dad was sceptical initially. He tried to get into the Dorpers, but it was a price entry point as well for that. So it's been an exciting journey, but very different. So traditionally, Chatwell country is quite hard country. Um, traditionally, a lot of wool growing um, producers in this area. People do have bread in the past. We grow a lot of regrowth and a lot of timber in this country. So the goats was a bit of a no-brainer as far as a cost saver. It turned... Uh, an issue of controlling regrowth and vegetation before to an asset. So um, obviously a lot less costs on diesel and, and dozers and it's better on the country, obviously, if we can manage it using stock numbers. Um, it's been one of the biggest learning curves and, yeah, it's really interesting. So we've had two paddocks running side by side, one with sheep and one with goats, um, with far more goats, 1,500 head on 600 hectares compared to 500 head of sheep on 400 hectares. And the difference in the two paddocks is remarkable as the sheep have grazed that grass level right down, whereas a good level of ground cover has been left by the goats. We've done a lot of fencing in 2020 for the drought um, with the Queensland Feral Pest Initiative. Um, so that gave us the opportunity to move into different stock other than merinos and weathers. And to be honest, I did a lot of research trying to find negatives for the goats and getting into them. Um, couldn't find too many, um, still haven't really had a few parasite issues, but not that you don't have that with sheep, but the goats have definitely taken off. Um, you know, a lot of people say oh, I've been running goats for 20, 25 years, but no one's really been managing them. And that's, I guess, the exciting thing, especially in our area, no one's been doing much. And there is a number of domestic markets for us. There's at least three or four sort of abattoirs within 150 kilometers for us um, to sell our goats for premium prices. Um, so in the short term, there's a lot of opportunity just for the domestic market. We always had a lot of costs with the infrastructure. The thing to remember, and you don't really realise when you start doing this fencing and the dog fencing and all the internal fencing, is it's not just a fence. Like It's very cliche and that's what the long reach slogan is, but it's not. It really takes away the stress of dogs and pigs and just takes away that um, unknown. It just gives you back control. So I guess what price can you put on low stress, taking back control of your stock, predation. So the fence pays for itself, to be honest, just from a mental health perspective and from, you know, a livestock perspective. Yeah. It's been, it's been really surprising how receptive other producers have been in this area. And quite a few people have been dipping their toe in and even contacting us and said, oh, you know, look, if you've got a couple of hundred, I'm thinking about getting into it. And a lot, a lot of them, the draw card has been that vegetation control and management because our country, it is a big issue and a big cost. Something really important for us going into goats was the manual handling of the goats, especially for dad. Uh, not a young man anymore, he's in his 60s, but um, keen to be very involved still. So we've got a bulk handler, which is a raised race, which restricts movement. So we use that for our tagging and all our drenching. Um, also played a little bit around on the technology side with mustering with drones. We've ordered an auto drafter. So that's going to help with our data sets and our EBVs and managing numbers and, and again, um, manual handling by not having to physically handle the goat so much. We've also invested in a serpentine draft, which was something a little bit different and a bit unique. Um, just again, makes it easier for the flow of the goats heading through that drafting system and they're not racing through and um, making it a lot easier to handle. So there's a lot of information at the moment about kidding rates, um, yields and growths, and a lot of it anecdotal. I think it's really important that the industry needs to shift towards a data-based decisions so that producers can actually see cold hard facts about yields and breeding types and you know boars versus Kalahari's and rangelands and how they actually perform in different areas and environments. I guess the thing that drives me and gets me up in the morning and get, I get really excited about is this is kind of my baby. Um, it's something new and different. People have been running goats for a long time, but not in our area and managed. Um, I'm pretty excited about some of the genetics and improvements we can make with our stock and actually breeding 
our own livestock and potentially breeding our own bucks in our own country and, and seeing what they'll do in turnover times. And I just, I love it. I love, <laughs> I do love the goats.